Welcome back to another episode of Meat Sweats. Now in today's video, you've cooked for yourself, you've cooked for friends, you've cooked for family, you've done all the backyard stuff. But let's say you're ready to step things up a notch. Let's say that you're ready to cook for a crowd. So in today's video, we're gonna go through a lot of helpful tips so you could be the most successful when you've got a pit full of meat and a line full of hungry people. So let's get after it. So right away, let's just start off with the most important one right off the bat, right? There's no reason to bury the lead here. There's no reason to make you hang on and wait for the super secret tip. The biggest tip that I can give you is to always set yourself up with a little bit of schedule before you get cooking, right? I would recommend having a schedule for any cook that you do. Like even if it's just one rack of ribs in the backyard for you know yourself or your family, whatever. But especially when you're dealing with this quantity of meat. So today I'm on brisket duty. We're cooking for a farmer's market. So I've got six briskets in there. Also a pretty good sized pork butt. Uh, so when you're dealing with those types of numbers, it is super, super important to have your schedule ready before you do anything. Now, why is the schedule so important? Well, for a couple reasons. The first one being like, it's always smart to go into anything you do with a plan, right? Like if you're playing sports, you're always gonna have a game plan for that game. You're always gonna have like a scouting report, whatever. So you wanna plan going into a cook like this. The second thing to really keep in mind here uh, is that, listen, no matter what you make your schedule, like at some point during this cook, it's gonna get fucked up. Like not everything is gonna go according to plan. Like the first time that you have a cook that goes exactly according to plan, it'll be the first time that it's ever happened in the history of history. Uh, so my tip within this tip would be to always build yourself at least an extra hour in your schedules. You know, and the biggest thing to keep in mind on that is like, if everything goes exactly according to plan and you have an extra hour to work with because you build it into your schedule, the brisket's only gonna be better if you let it rest longer. On the flip side of that, if you don't give yourself that hour, you think everything's gonna go according to plan, maybe the weather changes, maybe it takes longer to trim the briskets, maybe the briskets just take longer to cook, maybe the fire doesn't start as quickly as you want. Like there's a whole slew of shit that could go wrong here. And if you don't give yourself that little buffer room, like if you've got people waiting in line, they're hungry and you're an hour behind schedule, either A, like your product's not gonna be that good, you're gonna pull it off the pit too early, or B, you're gonna have like starving people in line who are gonna be pissed off at you because it wasn't ready when you said it was. Pretty much the key to everything here is we just wanna make life as easy as possible for ourselves as we're cooking. So another tip here, get everything that you need for this cook ready, clean to go before you get going. So. You know, if you're trimming and seasoning briskets, you wanna make sure that you have that station ready to go for you. So have a clean cutting board, clean knives, sharpened knives. You want your rubs, whatever you're gonna be using for a binder. Like you want all of that prepped, ready to go before you start. So whether that's the night before, a couple hours before you get started, like whatever, just have it all there ready for you. Like what, what do chefs call that? Mise en place, mise en place, something like that. Have everything ready to go that way. Whenever you get started, all you have to focus on is just doing the cook instead of you know running around trying to find shit, trying to clean shit, or you know you have to run out to the store because you forgot something. So just have all that prepped, ready to go, make life easier for yourself. Now, speaking of trimming and seasoning, it is going to be super important to keep everything about as uniform as possible. It's gonna be for a couple reasons. The first one's pretty self-explanatory. Like you want whatever one person's eating to taste the exact same as what the next person's eating. The second, uh, it's just gonna help everything on the smoker cook easily, uh, cook uniform, kind of everything and around the same time that you want it to, right? So if we're doing a bunch of briskets, we don't wanna trim any of them differently than the other one. Like we don't wanna leave one a little too fatty. We don't wanna, 
you know, change the size on any of them. Like we just want everything to be uniform. That way when they're cooking, it's all the same. Same thing for like ribs. Like you wouldn't do six racks of ribs and like pull the membrane off of three of them, but then leave the membrane on for the other three. I don't know why you would do that, but like this just isn't the time to experiment on different things. And even, you know, when we're wrapping, like we don't want to wrap some briskets in butcher paper, wrap other briskets in foil, because everything is just going to get done at different times. It's going to be hard for you to keep track of. So the more uniform everything is the better everything's gonna cook it's all gonna cook evenly cook the same it's not gonna throw any more variables into this for you now this next part is gonna be pretty dependent on what type of smoker you have how much space you have to work with a whole bunch of different things so it's gonna be a little different for a lot of different people but still the main point we're trying to get here is gonna be the same for everybody so still listen up we're gonna talk about loading the pit and how everything's gonna fit on there and how you need to make sure that you know how your cooker cooks in order to everything gets done at the same time. So personally, I'm using a 250 gallon uh, offset repurposed propane tank smoker. Uh, so all the heat is gonna be coming from the firebox over here. It's coming up, coming horizontally across the meat this way and out that smokestack. So when I'm loading the pit, especially with brisket, I'm going to be putting the point of the meat closer to the fire stack. That way, you know, all the fat that's there is going to be able to candle that heat. Um, also got a split of wood right here, just kind of protecting these points up front. Going to have to spritz those in just a minute. Uh, but as you can see, like you just have to play Jenga with your smoker to make sure that everything gets on there. You never want to load these things up to where everything is going to be touching each other. Like you don't want any meat touching because then, you know, the smoke won't get through there. But get everything in there nice and tight. Uh, make sure everything's kind of uniform like this brisket right here. It's crazy long So I just went vertically with that one But the rest of them going horizontal here as I mentioned like a lot of that has to do with what type of smoker You have the space that you have the type of fuel you're using yada 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 again Just focus on the big point here because you know as you're loading up the pit Just know where you're putting everything when you're putting it there and just how it's going to cook in that spot. So for me personally, with this offset smoker, like I mentioned, all that heat, all that smoke is coming from the firebox side over here, coming across at the smokestack. So I know, you know, the briskets that I'm gonna be putting closer to the firebox at first are gonna be cooking a lot faster than the ones over by the smokestack. So throughout that cook, again, it doesn't matter what type of smoker you have, like you're probably gonna have to do this if you're using, or if you're cooking a whole bunch of meat where you're gonna have to kind of rotate where everything is so for me i'm going to move the stuff that's in the front eventually over towards the back the stuff that was in the back going a little slower at first i'll then rotate that towards the front it'll start to cook a little faster um, if you're using like a traeger or some sort of pellet grill like it's probably going to be pretty similar where the heat's coming from one side coming across the other uh, if you're using like an, an egg um, I'd imagine like if you have like a deflector plate in there, the stuff that's around the outside is gonna cook a little bit faster because it'll catch a little bit more heat. So just kind of move those things around. Um, if you're using like a vertical smoker, like you might just have to change where everything is. I don't, I'm not too familiar with like electric smokers or anything, but just have an idea of your smoker, how everything cooks in specific spots. And then that way you can have everything done at the same time. So they're gonna be cooking at different speeds at first. Like the stuff over here is gonna be faster at first, stuff here will be slower at first. But once you start to rotate stuff, by the end it'll all get done at the same time or at least close to the same time. Now, one highly, highly important thing that I want everyone out there to remember is the most important part about cooking barbecue. Really the whole reason why we do it in the first place is drinking beer. Now, even if you're cooking for a crowd, don't be afraid to get bevved up a little bit, right? Don't be afraid to enjoy a couple of your favorite beverages. It's a delicious treat. Plus, you're going to cook better if you're lubed up. With that being said, listen, let's try to avoid getting plastered if we're cooking for a crowd, right? We're not cooking for our friends where we can just get shit-faced hammered all night, pass out, end up serving them something that's just been burnt to hell, right? So maybe just, just be an adult about it, right? Just be a professional. Have a few, enjoy yourself, get loose, just don't get like obliterated. That's that's all, but if you're not drinking, you're not doing it right. All right, so you followed all those instructions, you rocked your cook, now we're out here, we're setting up for service, but we're gonna save all that for another video. So in the meantime, smoke them if you got them, we out.